Hi, I'm Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University in our main automotive technology lab. Today we're going to discuss how to use your gauges to diagnose a variable displacement compressor. Today we're diagnosing a vehicle that has 1234YF refrigerant in it and it's a, it's a pretty mild day in the shop. It's uh, 64 degrees and 22% uh, humidity, so not a great day to be working on uh, air conditioning. Uh, so we have the car uh, started, we have the engine starting to warm up. If I take a look at the initial gauge readings, we'll take a look at it. I have about 40 PSI on the low side and around uh, 120 PSI on the high side. So if I was looking at those gauge readings, I would think that the, um, that the low side is a little bit high and the high side is a little bit low. So we tell my students, I tell my students that, um, you know, typically, you know, normal gauge readings, depending upon the ambient temperature, you know, we're, we're looking at around 20 to 40 PSI on the low side and around 150 to, to maybe 350 on the high side. On a 64 degree day, I'd probably be closer to that 150 uh, uh, mark. If it was 100 degrees outside, I'd be, probably be a lot closer to that 350 mark. But if I'm taking a look at these gauge readings, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're really not normal. Um, and so the key concept here is that I'm dealing with a vehicle with a variable displacement compressor. And any time I'm dealing with a variable displacement compressor, not only do I need to look at my gauge readings, but I also need to look at my uh, duty cycle of my solenoid to see where we're at. Am I at 100% uh, duty cycle or am I at a low duty cycle? And so what I have here is I have a, um, a voltmeter that's tied into the uh, control wire of the, um, of the variable displacement solenoid and I can see what my duty cycle is. Now you can hook up a scan tool and do the same thing. So I'm at 41% duty cycle right now. So you know my, um, my variable displacement compressor which, which is a coaxial style, a wobble plate style compressor. Some people call that a swash plate. I call it a wobble plate because that's what our textbooks call it. There is a wobble plate that changes angle. Okay, think of that. And so what's happening is that instead of, uh, full displacement would be a, a steep angle like this. Uh, very minimum displacement would be that wobble plate would be straight up and down. And so uh, this is maybe the halfway. So I'm not getting full stroke out of my uh, pistons. I'm only getting, I'm gonna call half stroke, 41% of the stroke versus 100% of the stroke. So I would expect at that point in time, the gauge readings to be what they are because my compressor is not pumping full refrigerant or it's not pumping at full capacity. It's only pumping it at half capacity. So when, when that happens, the gauge readings are gonna show uh, again, the less the compressor is pumping, the more the low side reading is gonna be on the high side of normal or even maybe above normal. And then the high side is gonna be on the low side of normal, which in this case, it, it really is. So under this scenario, if this was not a variable displacement compressor, and if I saw these gauge readings and, and, the, and the vehicle is fully warmed up, I would think that, well, I possibly have a weak compressor. So this is kind of showing you what uh, a weak compressor looks like as far as um, only pumping, let's say, half, half, half the capacity itself. So, so if I saw these readings and my compressor was at 100% duty cycle, I would be very concerned at that point in time. I was like, there's, there's a problem that the compressor is maxed out and, and I'm not getting a good reading. So we're gonna try to manipulate the system and try to get the duty cycle of the, um, of the, of the solenoid to rise. And when it does that, I should be able to get some uh, changes um, with the gauge readings. I went into the vehicle and I changed from recirculation to fresh air. So now the vehicle is taking the uh, warm air under the engine and it's pulling into the AC system. So it's giving it a bigger heat load than what we had before. So instead of you know bringing in uh, 64 degree air, it may be bringing in 100 degree air because of the because of the temperature under the hood. But I can see that my um, that my duty cycle has raised up to 71 percent. So again, that uh, wobble plate is going and physically um, tilting more, we'll call that, which is, which is allowing the uh, pistons to, uh, to have a larger stroke. So 74, almost 75% of the stroke versus 100. So let's see what that does to our gauge readings. So if you guys could take a look at your gauge readings here. So my, um, my low side is down below 40. So it's roughly at around um, maybe 37, 38 PSI. And my high side is up at around uh, 220. 
PSI, somewhere around there. So the key is, is that my, um, my compressor is pumping a lot more because of the duty cycle. And I, and, and I can see that with my gauges. Um, uh, the better pumping that my compressor gets, uh, well, my low side is going to drop down uh, lower, and then my high side will probably possibly uh, raise up also with that. Now again, I don't have a, a very uh, large heat load right now um, uh, because it's only you know, 64 degrees in the shop, so I'm probably not going to be able to get up to 100%, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm forcing that solenoid to go up a little bit higher. Right now I'm at 82% duty cycle so it is going up a little bit higher it is roughly around 40 degrees uh air blowing out of the the actual interior of the vehicle so it's blowing fairly cool and again i doubt if i'm going to be able to get up to a full 100 percent so i went back in the vehicle and i uh, switched it back on research and then i brought my blower motor down to the low speed so that's going to uh, try to try to instigate a freeze up condition uh, and so I can see that my duty cycle has dropped down to around 41, 42%, so it's stabilized. It hasn't dropped down any further than that. So again, so I'm, I'm now down, you know, 41% of my displacement, we'll call that, of my compressor. And if I take a look at my gauge readings and see what they did on that, I can see that my, that my uh, high side dropped dramatically. It dropped down to uh, 100 PSI, you know, which under a normal fixed displacement compressor would be a concern. But for a variable displacement compressor, it's perfectly normal if the displacement is down low. And then my uh, low side is right around 40. So again, so my, uh, my low side is, is on, the, on the high side of normal. Sorry, my low side is on the high side of normal. Make sure I said that right. And my high side is definitely low at only, um, at only um, 100 uh, PSI. So if I take a look at my duty cycle on this, and kind of take a look at my solenoid, we are at roughly 401 hertz, so 401 times a second this solenoid is duty cycling off and on. So uh, I'm gonna go back to my, and then it, I am on my positive trigger, so we're at 40%. So if you're not sure if you have a variable displacement solenoid or not, grab my compressor here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is that you're gonna to wanna to look at the compressor, and this is a, um, this is a verbal displacement compressor that has a, um, uh, a, a it's actually uh, actually clutchless, but you're going to want to look at the back, and this is where the head is at for a wobble plate style compressor, and I'm going to look at a solenoid there, and so if I take a look at this, I got a, a pretty good bore in here where the solenoid sits, it's a two wire unit, uh, the solenoid is around 10 ohms. So you can open that out to confirm that it is a solenoid, solenoid if you're not sure. Sometimes on the older compressors, there's um, a pressure switch in it and the, um, and the pressure switch will, um, will ohm out. Uh, it's probably a high pressure cutoff switch. So it, it ohms out uh, really low, uh, maybe a half an ohm and one ohm or something like that because that high pressure switch should be closed, you know, if you're under 435 PSI or somewhere around there. So again, so uh, uh, if the variable displacement compressor, it's gonna be a coaxial style compressor. You can see that I got my pistons are in this chamber right in here. The head is right in here. The valves, the reed valves are actually that plate right there. And then up in front is called the wobble chamber. That's that wobble plate that's gonna change the angle is gonna be up here in front. And so that's how you know if you have a, um, a variable, variable displacement compressor. One interesting note is, is on this particular system, I did turn the uh, AC off, so we can confirm that because my, um, my uh, low side pressure and my high side pressure are, is, uh, is uh, roughly equalized uh, at around 80 uh, PSI, so I can see that. And my uh, clutch has disengaged, so I am dealing with a compressor that does have a clutch. But if I take a look at my duty cycle, my duty cycle of the solenoid is still at around 40%. So I, I am dealing with a Chrysler system. So this is, uh, I'm dealing with a 2014, 2015 Dodge Dart. And so, so even though the AC system is off and even though the clutch is off, they are still duty cycling that solenoid at, uh, at a 40% and I can still get a frequency on it of uh, 401 Hertz. This is Scott Norman and I hopefully you enjoyed the videos. And if you're looking for more automotive educational videos, uh, please subscribe to my Professor Pintan YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day.